In this video, we're going to explore the RenderMan integration that's been added in 3D Code 4.8. As of this recording and build 4.8.04, it's still a bit of a work in progress, so there should be improvements to features and stability in upcoming builds. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in its current state. I first would want to go to the RenderMan website, download under the commercial or the non commercial version. Once that is properly installed, there are no plugins or scripts to be concerned about because 3D Code will automatically recognize it. In the render workspace, you can go to the right side of the user interface here in this drop list menu and choose RenderMan. Before I do that, I want to mention one major difference between RenderMan and 3D Code's default hardware render. If you apply an emissive blending mode to one of your paint layers or in the sculpt room, if you've applied a PBR shader, which happens to have emissive properties, then you can use any object in your scene as a light object in RenderMan. Whereas the same emissive elements in the default 3D coat hardware render will only produce a glow effect. Let me go ahead and click real time render. This is 3D Coat's hardware render, and you can see it glows, but it's not casting light on anything else in the scene. I also happen to have a rectangular light object that you can see here. Again, it does glow, but it's not casting light on anything. Now, this only applies again to the hardware render, but for RenderMan, when I click Render Preview, it actually will treat those objects as if they are light emitting objects. Once you click render preview, this panel will pop up. And because this particular scene happens to be high poly sculpts, it's a much heavier scene being exported. Plus 3D Coat is also having to convert the materials that you have, such as your PBR shaders and or smart materials and paint layers. So I'll left mouse click to drag that into the center and I'll wait for it to begin rendering. If you have a low polygon object, obviously the exporting of the scene will be much quicker. As you'll notice, it begins to progressively render. It will refine and refine and refine until you have reached the limit here in render settings as I'll show in a moment. Or you can just click the cancel render icon here Another option is to hit the escape key. The HDRI environment map will be used for image-based lighting and render man, just as it does with the default render. You can adjust the exposure, even while it's rendering, or the gamma. I'll go ahead and click this icon to stop the render. And now I'll turn that rectangular light object off. I'll go back. Wacom tablet is messing with me right now, so I'm not able to see my cursor sometimes. With that rectangular light source turned off, I click the render preview button once more. So again, it'll take just a moment for it to load. Okay, so it's resuming again. I could continue letting it render, but I'll go ahead and stop it. You have a scrub tool where you can scrub back and forth between the different images that you've rendered. So I'm going to use the up arrow key to go back one render. Down arrow key will step forward. So I can see the difference with that light turned on and with it turned off. So I'll go ahead and close this out. Now, if I go to the render settings, you'll see the default is at 1280 by 720. You can set the time limit here and change the different parameters for your sampling. You can also use GPU denoising. Go ahead and cancel that. You may want to set your depth of field plane first by checking depth of field plane and then adjusting here with this parameter its location. You also may want to adjust the depth of field degree. If you check store alpha channel, it's basically going to remove the background. 
you would adjust your denoising level if you're using denoising. I'm going to leave that off for the time being. And then your resolution gate. This is where you would point to the output for your renders. And I'll go to final render. As you can see here, it's showing the render time. It's waiting for the first checkpoint. And then it'll show a percentage down here of its progress momentarily. You can stop the render here, or again, hit the escape key. I should mention while it's loading the scene, you also happen to have other shaders here in the shader panel. If you click here, you have fabric, metal, paint, polymer, refractive. This is good for glass and things of that sort. These are default shaders that are already set up for you. Because of the low lighting level, we probably would want to increase the samples. We'll see how it does with the default level. Again, I can see the percentage as it renders here. All right, so I stopped the render to adjust the render settings. I increased the resolution, the time limit, and I bumped up the max samples and the other sample amounts just a bit. And I ran the render again. If you click Open Render Result, we can see it here. Now, once we have it, we can use our arrow keys to go back and check the different render passes that it creates. As you can see, different diffuse, emissive, specular, and direct diffuse and so on. So we can save it out, export the file as an EXR. That's going to be a quick overview of the RenderMan integration in 3D Code 4.8. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.